You see them all the time and they are constantly telling you what to do. We are talking about traffic signals and there is a lot more to how they are made and work than meets the eye. Let's start with a little bit of history. During the 1800s, horse-drawn carriages were becoming hazardous to many pedestrians trying to cross roads. On December 10th, 1868, the first gas-lit traffic lights were installed outside the House of Parliament in London. Here in America, a policeman named Lester Wire, who was also concerned with increasing traffic, came up with the idea of the first electric traffic light in 1912. In 1920, another policeman named William Potts from Detroit, Michigan, invented the first four-way and three-colored traffic light similar to what we see today. Through the 1950s, rotating timers and tabs would work in sequences that changed the signals based on the set speeds of the dials. With the invention and rapid improvement of computers in the 1960s, traffic lights also became computerized and could now monitor traffic and change lights accordingly. Through the next three decades, technology and software improved where multiple signals and multiple movements at one location could be programmed to meet the needs of a location, time of day, and volume of cars. Today, our signals are so advanced they come with sensors, motherboards, and any number of possible programmable adjustments that can be changed on site or even from a remote location. So what is inside one of these signals? Well first you have to know that most signals are approximately three feet in height, a lot bigger than you thought. A modern traffic signal can be broken up into five major parts. The signal light, the signal box, the sensor, the timer, and the conflict monitor. The signal light. This is the part we all see. The red, green, and amber lights that direct traffic. What used to be colored lenses and bulbs has now been replaced with colored LED diodes that run cooler, use less energy, and last longer. This advanced design also proves efficient as individual lights can be changed out without having to replace the entire signal. The signal box. Depending upon the size or design of the intersection, the signal box can be installed on the ground or mounted to one of the signal posts. Inside the box are various components working together to program and monitor the signal. Our third key component is the sensor. Once consisting of roadway plates and cables that would sense the weight of the vehicle on the road, new modern sensors are being installed in bird's eye traffic cameras that register the change in pixelation through a viewfinder. These sensors are much easier to repair or replace, unlike the older methods of plates and cables where the roadway would have to be dug up to fix them. Next is the timer, or quite simply the brains of the operation. The timer is programmed with the number of vehicle movements, lanes, and timing sequences necessary to assist the flow of traffic at a particular intersection. Working with the sensors, it can adjust the signal as necessary. The last part is what I like to call the security guard of the operation. It is the conflict monitor. In a conflict, such as in the event a signal malfunction allowing two green lights from conflicting directions to light up, the conflict monitor will shut down the signal and revert to blinking red, blinking yellow, or both until an engineer can come out to investigate the situation and provide a solution. At DOTD, signal boxes, timers, conflict monitors, and signal lights arrive from the manufacturer ready for testing. Each year, the DOTD signal maintenance shop repairs roughly 200 signals and programs over 40 new ones. Each timer and box is programmed based on the report from the district. These reports are like the blueprint for the signal and allows the technician to program the signal to meet the needs of each specific location's lanes, traffic volumes and movement specifications. Viewfinder sensors are also programmed to react to the changes in traffic conditions. After all the testing and diagnostics are completed and approved, the signal box is sent out to the field to be installed, where once again it is run through tests to make sure that the specifications at the shop match the location perfectly. But my signal is not working. Why? There are actually a number of mechanical and physical reasons for a signal to stop working. Weather is the prime culprit. Lightning and high winds can cause power surges or complete loss of power. 
High winds can move sensors or also damage equipment. Here in Louisiana, heat can play a major factor in a signal breaking down. Temperatures in a single box can reach as high as 140 degrees, damaging delicate electronic parts within the box. Physical damage caused by falling trees or tree limbs, large vehicles or reckless and impaired drivers who strike signal poles can also play a role in malfunctions. Lastly, swarms of insects, small birds, lizards, and rodents can sometimes gain access into a signal box and damage equipment, causing shorts in the wiring. When a signal goes down, a field visit will take place. If the traffic engineer can replace a part, then repairs can be done in the field. If not, the parts and sometimes the entire box or signal will be brought to the signal repair shop for repairs. Here, an extensive diagnostic test will take place to determine what the issue is, and parts will be either fixed or completely replaced. When the signal has passed all tests and programming has been re-established, it can be returned to the field. So there you have it. Your signal is designed to help move traffic through an intersection as efficient as possible. And although it cannot shrink the traffic volumes or make that distracted driver aware that the signal has turned green, it is designed to give each movement at an intersection as much time as possible. Check out more of our YouTube shorts at our DOTD YouTube channel by clicking below. If you have a question or a good idea for a future video, let us know by emailing us at dotdcs.com at LA.gov.